Hi everyone, today we're going to be colouring this lovely Christmas tree. This is day 19 from Johanna Basswood's Inky Advent Calendar. Now I've got a few different ideas on something to try with this tree, so I'm going to go for a few different things. The first thing I am going to do is I'm going to colour the tree in a green felt tip pen to start with. This is a Stedler pen, um, it's just a normal felt tip pen. Okay, and it's not a very dark green, but the reason I'm going to do this, I'm just going to start, is because I'm going to do a sort of stripey effect on the tree, so it looks like pine needles, and there may be gaps between them, and I don't want it to show white. Um, if you were doing this for a tree um, and you wanted it to look snowy, then having the white paper under it would look really good, but I don't want that effect for this tree, so I'm just doing a base colour to start with and then I'll go over the top of it. You can use any sort of felt pen. Um, normally if it was in a book I would recommend testing it first to make sure it doesn't bleed through the page but because this is on a loose piece of paper that doesn't really matter anyway. Um, I find with um, pens I've heard that alcohol markers leak through a lot. I've never used one so I don't know but this is a water-based pen um, if you're in the UK we just call them a, a felt pen because um, the, the tip is made of felt, so we call them felt tips. But um, anyway, I find in the books if you use these sorts of pens, if you layer them up lots then you're more likely to get a bleed through. If you keep just a gentle layer that seems to help but I always test them in the back of the book and I do one layer and check and then another layer and check and I basically count how many layers I can do before it starts to show through the page. Um, I did some in my copy of Secret Garden by Johanna Basford and I couldn't do many layers, it started to show through. It didn't bleed through but I, if I held the page up I could see the shadow through from the black which wasn't what I wanted for the picture behind because it didn't have a background. So, uh, but it was an old copy of Secret Garden and the paper is different to the more modern books so that's something to sort of bear in mind that you need to try it on every single book you can't rely on the paper being the same now that's very patchy I'm absolutely rubbish at using pens but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be going over it in a minute the next thing I want to do is the these sort of beads the decorations um, my idea is that I'm going to use a Posca pen for those um, I'm go I've got a yellow and a red which I've decided to use because I, when I do the um, needles I might overlap them a little bit and so a Posca pen, is, which doesn't want to work, i um, just got to shake it. Um, a Posca pen you can, pe you can draw over, pencil goes over it so that's why I decided to use this. So I'm, my idea is just do all the round ones red and then these bigger oval shaped ones I'm going to do yellow. It's just a simple, my whole idea for this is going to be a sort of red and yellow scheme. It's not, oh that probably should have been yellow, never mind. But um, it's not very original but I do like my reds and yellows for Christmassy colours. So there we go, obviously, um, choose whatever colour you want. And here's the yellow, I'm going to shake it up, try it out, I think I've used it quite recently so it should be okay. I find it's, if you haven't used them for a while, they uh, they get a bit thick, clogged up on the end. You can see the tip has got a lot of paint all over it, so uh, they get clogged. Now we need to leave this to dry before we... Uh, do the rest of the tree. So I'm going to work on this, the the um, stem and the presents and things, and uh, come back to it. I've just got to open up my tin of pencils. I'm really not very organised. Okay. Now with a pine tree, I was thinking the, the um, trunk. That's the word I'm looking for. Is quite dark. So I'm going to go straight in with a the 76, which is one of the darker browns. I'm going to start lightly though. And what my idea is to try and make it look a little bit more rounded by making it darker on the edge and a bit lighter towards the middle. Because then it looks like the light is catching the centre and your brain thinks, well, it would catch the centre because that's nearer to me 
all sticking out a little bit. So I'm just putting more layers on that outside bit. And actually I'm going to take the even darker brown, which is the 77, and do a little bit more um, on that edge. Just checking that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just layering it over and over and over. Now, if you're using a thin paper, you have to be careful that you don't, it's, you can go through the page if you keep pushing and pushing. And then back to the slightly lighter brown to just touch it up towards the middle. There we go, I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, now the, the um, what's it called, pot, that's the word, the pot, we're going to try and get a similar effect, so make it look more rounded. So I'm going to start with red, as I said, I'm going to use a sort of red and yellow colour scheme on this one. So 29 is the nice red, and to start with I'm going to pick out the bits that I'm going to do in red. So this is going to be red, and every other stripe. Um, hmm. and then this bit and now I'm going to think about how I'm going to shade that up so I'm going to put more layers of red here lots of layers and then lighter towards the middle and the same on this side now you could of course use this technique with any colour it doesn't need to be red I don't know why I always think red Christmassy. I mean, obviously Father Christmas wears his red colouring, but it's just a, we always used to have red at home growing up. So, okay, so I'm just going over the bits a little bit more until I feel that it's standing out enough. Okay, and the yellow. Now, here in the um, set of Ergosofts we've got two darkish yellows. This one looks more gold but it's orangey and this one's more pure yellow, it looks more like that yellow. So I'm going to try this one but if I want to shade it up I'm going to have to use this one because with the yellow, so I'm going to use this yellow on the edges I want it a bit darker and then the other one in the other places. The thing with yellow is adding more layers of yellow to try and get it darker doesn't tend to work so well. You naturally need to use different shades of yellow. Now you might not have all these shades if you haven't got this set so that could be tricky. Now I'm leaving a little white bit in the middle um, but you probably have got the um, Yes, you would have number 16, which is this colour. So you could use that with a yellow. That's another idea. Or you could use a bit of a pale orange as well. So I'm just going over the top of that yellow that I put down and um, extending it out a little bit as well, but trying to leave a white gap. Now this very bottom bit here doesn't look very rounded to me. So I'm going to go back to my red, number 29. Just try and darken up just that edge. And this edge a bit more. There we go. I shall leave that like that now. Right, um, I'm thinking about that Posca, but I'm going to just do all the presents as well and then go to the Posca. Now, yellow and red presents again. So I'm going to grab the same colours as I did before. Now I could do all the presents red and all the ribbons yellow or the other way round or I could do it sort of alternate so red present yellow ribbon, red ribbon, yellow present. I think I'm going to do it consistent and I'm going to do every present the same colour. Um, I'm going to do the presents yellow. So I'm going to use this darker yellow which is number 11 to start with and do a little bit around the edge of each one. Now you could do it along the edges of the ribbons and under the ribbons and things like that but I'm just going to do it around the edge. Keep it a little bit simpler and easier for me. 
and then fill in the rest of the space with the yellow. I'm not going to leave a white gap like I did on the tree. I'm just going to go right over the whole thing. I want it to be really vibrant. Now the reason that I've decided to do red ribbon is because there's some shading I want to do on the ribbon and I think it'd be easier to do it in red than yellow. I do find yellow is quite tricky to work with the shade with things like that so we've just got a bunch of yellow presents. And back to our red number 29. Now as always I'm going to start with a light layer and then think about what I'm doing. I'm going to make it darker near the present and then fade out towards the end. So here again just a gentle layer and think about what we want to do. And I'm thinking coming out from the centre of this bow make it darker where the, the um, ribbon would be gathered and we'll leave the rest. It's just like a little pom-pom isn't it? I might just make that all the same tone, shade of colour. We've got a very different looking bow here. I'm going to do this rather like this first one and making it darker here. There we go. Now I know I haven't done the star on the tree, I'm going to leave that for a minute. We're going to go in with some greens on the tree. Um, where shall I start? I might just go in with this number five. Now I'm thinking we've got up to here, so I'm thinking I might do some stripes up to where that line is. and then do some more up to that one. Do they line up? Not quite. So I'm just going to sort of go through. Sorry, my paper's wibbling around. I shall keep hold of it. So I really am just doing lines. It's, I've got you need a sharp, this pencil isn't particularly sharp but I'm just working on making sure I find a sharp edge so I get a defined line. I probably could do with sharpening it but I'll probably only um, um, end up breaking the end. Now the joy with this is you can just keep going and going and going with it until you're happy. Now you can see that because the green's showing from underneath, we haven't got any white coming through. We're just going across, all the way across to the very end of the tree. Now I'm going to go in with the darker green. Now this one's a bit sharper so it might be better. Oops, I put that one away. I need to leave it out so I can put it in the description. Number 38. I always, I don't know if you look at the descriptions, but I always list um, the pencil numbers on there so that you can get organised if you want to before you watch, if you want to colour along. Or you can think, oh gosh, I don't have that one, what can I do? do instead but I guess until you see it you might not know. Uh, hopefully um, those of you that want to follow along are managing. I was tempted to just use a 24 set not the 36 set and uh, because I know some you know people might only have the 24 but when it's Christmas I just need that red and of course, if you've got other sets of pencils, you can just grab the red from there instead. I think that's what attracted me to buying my first polychromo set was that there was a there's a nice reds in there. It's quite therapeutic this line, line, line. Not a lot of thought. Doesn't matter if you go out of the lines. There we go. Now this star, 
I am going to do the star in a gold and I can't decide whether to use my Posca metallic gold or my glittery gold. I think I'm going to go for the metallic one. We've used a lot of glitter to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to fill in the, um, the star. I don't know if you can see very well. with. Now we have these dots coming out. I'm going to go over those in quite big blobs so it shows up. I don't think it will matter. It's quite big. Blob, blob, blob. And then over these lovely little sparkles. And again I've got to do it a bit bigger because the nib of this pen, although it's a small one, I find I think it's because it's paint, it's thick. It does quite a thick mark. So there we go. Now, you could now, of course, add other effects. You could put some snow on the tree. We've got these little dots in different areas on the tree, which I don't know whether Johanna was thinking about adding snow or whether she was just making it look extra pretty. I'm not sure. Or you could add some darker or lighter areas on the tree, but I'm going to leave it like that. So there we go. I shall tip it to the light so you can see the sparkle. There we go. Sparkling. Oh, you can see the sparkle on the ball wall next to it as well. So there we go. There's the tree. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and happy colouring.